What is going on, sauna goers? Eric here from the Shoe Style Sauna, and I'm here to bring you a recap and review of Night 2 of New Japan Pro Wrestling's Wrestle Kingdom 15. In this video, I'll be recapping and reviewing what went down on Night 2 of Wrestle Kingdom and give our official star ratings. So before I begin, I just want to say that if you haven't seen Wrestle Kingdom 15 yet, I highly suggest you subscribe to New Japan World or buy it on Fight TV or whatever. Please go watch the show. You will not regret it. Also, before I begin, please hit that like and the subscribe button down below and hit that bell to get notifications for all of our new videos. So let's dive right in. The first match of Night 2 of Wrestle Kingdom was a four-way match for the KOPW 2021 Provisional Trophy as Chase Owens, Bad Luck Fale, Bushi, and Toriano battle each other for the trophy. The match begins with Owens and Fale in the ring doing their version of the Finger Poke of Doom, or in this case, the Too Sweet of Doom, but Bushi and Yano break up the pin. This match is pretty basic. We saw some high flying for Bushi, Fale and Chase work together, and Yano's usual trickery. At one point, Chase and Fale were arguing, with Fale making the point that if you, Chase Owens, wins, then you win, but if I win, then we win, which is pretty solid logic. Owens and Fale hit Bushi with a grenade launcher, and Yano came in and hit both Chase and Fale with a low blow and pinned Bushi to become the 2021 KOPW Provisional Trophy Holder. I'm giving this match two and a half stars. The next match was for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Team Championships as El Desperado and Yoshinobu Kanamaru defend their titles against Master Wato and Ryusuke Taguchi. This was a pretty decent match between three veterans in Desperado, Kanamaru, and Taguchi, and one newcomer who is still a little green, in my opinion, in Master Wato. There was a great exchange between Desperado and Taguchi, but Wato comes in and hits Desperado with a botchy 619. A little bit later in the match, Desperado rolls up Taguchi and Taguchi kicks out, but Wato comes in and hits Desperado with a stiff shot because he got the timing just a little bit wrong. The match ends after Desperado hits Taguchi with a pinche loco and pins Taguchi to retain the junior tag team titles. I'm giving this match three stars. The next match was for the Never Open Weight Championship as the Dragon Shingo Takagi defends against Jeff Cobb. Now, if there was to be a candidate for a show stealing match, it would be this one. This was a straightforward, smash mouth, hard hitting match with no dirty underhand tactics. Just a good old fashioned one on one fight between two of the baddest dudes on the planet. Stiff forearms, suplexes, and power bombs were the main ingredients for this absolute meal of a match. At one point in the match, after starting to realize that Cobb is surviving everything the dragon is throwing at him, Shingo starts to target his knee, which takes away some of Cobb's power. Cobb is able to power through on one knee and hit Shingo with a tour of the islands, but is unable to cover Shingo because of his injured knee. Shingo hits Cobb with three pumping bombers and Cobb refuses to go down. After hitting Cobb with a throwing suplex, Shingo goes for a fourth pumping bomber and finally knocks Cobb down. Shingo then hits Cobb with a last of the dragon and pins him to retain the never open weight championship. Whew. I'm giving this match five stars. The next match was a special singles match as the Cold Skull Sonata looks for revenge against his former tag team partner, the King of Darkness, Evil. For me personally, this was the match I was most excited to see. I've wanted to see this match ever since Evil defected from LIJ to the Bullet Club all the way back at the New Japan Cup Final in July. After Evil defected, we never really saw how Evil's longtime partner Sonata felt about the betrayal. They mainly stayed away from each other until the G1 B Block Final. Sonata would pick up the victory that night, but it didn't feel like Sonata really got his revenge. Sonata remained the Cold Skull, he remained cool, calm, and collected. Then during their meeting in World Tag League, Sonata let some emotions out. The two brawled to the backstage area and it seemed that we were seeing a different side of Sonata, an emotional side of Sonata. Now, coming into this match at Wrestle Kingdom, Everyone, including myself, were expecting to see an emotional Sonata. However, Sonata remained the Cold Skull. 
which is the most LIJ thing ever, if you think about it. Let me explain. As a member of Los Ingobernables de Japón, translated to the ungovernables, Sonata does everything his way no matter what. So coming into this match, everyone wanted to see an emotional Sonata. However, Sonata responded by wrestling the match the way he wanted to wrestle as the cold skull and not as the emotional anger filled wrestler that everyone was expecting. He wrestled the way he wanted which worked because he picked up the victory. Sonata was able to lock evil deep into skull end and had the match won but he wanted to win with the Muto moonsault and hits evil with the moonsault but then goes for a second one. Evil counters of course. Dick Togo then tries to strangle Sonata but Sonata was able to reverse and send Togo through a table. Sonata then hits Evil with Everything is Evil, or Everything is Sonata, a pop-up TKO, hello Randy Orton, and a third Muto Moonsault, and pins Evil for the victory, and gets revenge on the man that betrayed him. I'm giving this match four and a quarter stars. The next match was the semi-final for the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship as the Bone Soldier Taiji Ishimori defends against the number one contender Time Bomb Hiromu Takahashi. Hiromu and Ishimori have had a storied rivalry and this chapter of the rivalry began back at Summer Struggle in Jingu where Ishimori captured the Junior Heavyweight Championship from Hiromu. Then during the Best of Super Junior Tournament, uh, Ishimori had an issue with Hiromu main eventing more nice in the Best of the Super Juniors than the Junior Heavyweight Champion, which is a valid point. Hiromu also won the opportunity for this championship match by beating the Super J Cup winner El Phantasmo on night one. El Phantasmo just so happens to be Ishimori's tag team partner. This match pits Hiromu's fast-paced Lucha Libre style against Ishimori's technical submission style. Ishimori focuses on the injured shoulder that El Phantasmo targeted the night before as he used the yes lock a few times. Taiji almost gets Hiromu to tap out to the bone lock, but Hiromu was able to escape the hold, hit Ishimori with a victory royal and a time bomb too and pins Ishimori and becomes the new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion at Wrestle Kingdom for the second year in a row. I'm giving this match four and a half stars. The next match is the main event as the new IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental Champion Kota Ibushi defends against the man that stole his original championship opportunity, Switchblade Jay White. 48 minutes and 5 seconds. There was 48 minutes and 5 seconds between bells. And in that time, Kota Ibushi and Jay White painted a masterpiece of professional wrestling that will outlive both men. These two men went on an emotional roller coaster and took everyone along with them. Words cannot do this match justice. The emotions this match conjures within is indescribable. Simply put, this is the reason every wrestling fan fell in love with the sport of kings. If I had to choose one word to describe this match, it would be feelings. This match makes you feel something deep down inside. And in today's world where we're exposed to so much with technology and social media that we become so numb to so many things that when something actually makes us feel something, we latch onto that for dear life. And for me and so many other wrestling fans, that thing is professional wrestling. And this match makes you fall in love with professional wrestling all over again. I will not give away any move that happened in this match. That wouldn't be fair to you. I'm not gonna give anything away so that you can go and watch this match for yourself and experience that feeling for yourself. I am, however, going to rate this match and I'm going to give it this match six stars, which is a first here at the Shoot Style Sauna. This match transcends wrestling and is one of the greatest modern stories ever told. I am not just suggesting, I am requiring anyone that calls themselves a wrestling fan to watch this match. You will not regret it. After the match, uh, Kota Ibushi went around the ring and thanked all the commentators that were on hand for the event, uh, especially went up to thank Juice and Thunder Liger, who was applauding him. And then he went over to the English announce team, which struck a real chord for me because he, he didn't have to do that. But because they were there and they told that story for him, he went over and thanked them and literally 
both Japanese and English announced teams were crying, had tears in their eyes. They were that touched by this match and the story. The MVP of Wrestle Kingdom 15 is obviously the Golden Star, Kota Ibushi. I mean, do I really have to explain why? The match of the night for night two was the main event double title match. How could it not be? As an overall show, I'm giving Wrestle Kingdom 15 a grade of an A+. I'd really like to see any wrestling promotion try to top this show because I don't think it can be done. Before I sign off, please hit that like and the subscribe button down below. Go like us on Facebook at the Shoe Style Sauna and go watch Wrestle Kingdom. And again, I'm Eric from the Shoe Style Sauna and we'll see you soon. Yeah.